Um, I've called my talk today Serendipity or Planning Careers, and I'm just going to sort of take you on the journey that I went through. And actually, I think there are some sort of areas where I think there's some great opportunities that I didn't have and actually would have probably benefited from um, in, in the way I made my career choices. So what's my current role? As Catherine said, I'm Director and Dean of Education Equality, which uh, taking for HE for Responsibility of London and South East, and that takes overall responsibility reporting to Wendy Reid as medical director and overall director of education quality for health education in England for training about 15,000 commissioning of even larger numbers of non-medical undergraduate students and medical students and oversight of the medical schools and the geography particularly as we um, deliver the funding for their clinical placements. So the, our current budget uh, that we oversee is about 1.4 billion and as, par as, as part of the role um, each of the decks has to take national responsibility as a minor for pharmacy, veterans health, uh, rehabilitation diagnostics, clinical scientists, cancer and uh, space and aviation medicine, um, physicians associates endoscopy to name but a few. Each week something extra seems to pop onto the list. Uh, and add to that sort of a few things like uh, arrived this week and like oh we, we've got a conference could you just pop along and speak next week um, uh, so one has to have a pretty flexible uh, view on life um, and, and part of the role which is one of the things I'm really excited about it is it's responsible for workforce transformation and translation of good practice. So we've, in the past, when we were lots of SHAs, we're all doing lots of good work, but actually we never joined up. And we never ever joined up for the benefit of getting that workforce transformation right across the NHS uh, for improvement of, uh, of, of patient care. And that is really my mission in life. So the journey begins. This is where I come from, a very small town on the Welsh border. Looks pretty idyllic, not many people. Um, and it's been there for many, many years. Um, and this, um, I went to school, actually was one of the very first people to be in the school um, to be taught by their parents. So most of my parents were teachers, country school miles from anywhere. They suggested I might not like to be taught by them and go somewhere that was 20 miles away. And I said, no, thanks. Um, I can tell you, if your father is deputy head, you can't get away with much. Um, and um, actually, here is actually my childhood home in the background, so it's all, you know, not very far to go to school. But I think one of the most important things about this is, and it's something that's been borne out in selecting for excellence recently, is, is Herefordshire, where this is, is one of the lowest polar regions for um, sending basically medic medical students to medical school, and it's one of the most under-doctored areas now. So. In line with that, really, medicine wasn't on my mind as a, as a sort of primary career. My father was a physicist, um, so in fact, I wasn't absolutely certain what I wanted to do. So actually, I did a gap year at Hereford Hospital, and in fact, I sort of fell into this. I saw it in the local paper, turned up, applied, and I was doing a project on ICD-9 discharge coding, and also, interestingly, a pharmacy project, a unique pharmacy project for the Department of Health. And I think, for me, that was a really good exposure to work, you know, when it was my first, uh, my first kind of experience of work, working in the team, and invaluable learning about hospital systems, how to get what you want, who are the most important people, and that's not usually the people at the top, and also about hospital um, politics. And actually, part of this, this post was actually what we would now call systems improvement, but certainly wasn't called then. So in... After that sort of year, I, during that year, I decided, well, what, what, what would I want to do? And I was very interested in kind of physiology and, as you can see, pharmacology. So I went um, to University College Cardiff to take a BSc in physiology and pharmacology. The good thing about this degree was in the University of Wales, everything in the first year is at the same level. And then to take, so I was taking biochemistry and chemistry and physiology. I had really inspirational teachers and researchers around me, um, solid grounding in research, really high standards for a, B, for a BSc, and very small department. But actually a lot of common ground and work and lectures, in fact, was all human physiology with medical students. So my interest in medicine was sort of peaked at that time. And my first BSc project was in 
postprandial glucose metabolism um, and uh, as a part of the diabetes research with Tom Hayes at the Heath Hospital. Um, and I, w I had an increasing interest in research translated into medicine. And so as part of that, I wanted to see, you know, about how what I was learning about could be translated um, into sort of uh, how people operated. So I was able to go on a quite an interesting second year vacation work. I work for the Army Personnel Research Establishment, and yes, I have signed the Official Secrets Act. Um, and we were looking then at the effect, basically, of what happens to people when they ride around in, in various types of um, uh, armoured vehicles and um, have really, really very good setup with, um, so you could look at all the physiological parameters. Um, and it was very interesting working in that environment, particularly in a kind of a very structured hierarchy where everybody has a rank. So that's a very interesting thing. And as a civilian scientist, even as a second year kind of undergraduate, you have a rank. And anybody below you does what you want them to do. It's really, you know, quite interesting. And I was saying, would you mind? And they were going, well, ma'am, I'll do it. You know, so that was interesting. Um, and I worked for a very, very... Um, Again, an inspiration researcher, though I don't think he ever forgave me as I, I was very interested in sorting out his filing cabinet, especially the top secret files, which I careless, well, I, I tied it into something that he never, ever found again, so um, not invited back. <laughs> so at the end of, during that, that year, that second, that sort of vacation and onwards, I was thinking, where do I go next? And this is, um, I was offered an MSc in exercise physiology, a PhD in pharmacology and circadian rhythms. And I was very interested in really about human research. And, well, I looked for advice. There wasn't really much. Um, so I had a bit of brutal, I suppose, 15-minute career injection advice from my tutor, who was um, a medic uh, and also a very well-known scientist, who said to me, well, if you want to do this sort of stuff, Liz, as a clinical scientist, um, and this is probably completely politically incorrect, he said you will always be second class with even a third-rate medic. He said you have to go and do medicine. Um, so I went to the University of Birmingham. At that time, graduate entry um, courses were not known, so you can tell how old I am. Um, and I was Birmingham's very first graduate entry medical student, a course of one. Um, uh, and they kind of had to sort of, <laughs> sort of schedule the, the sort of uh, the course to fit around me. So I had a continued interest in research. Evidence-based research then was only just beginning, and I actually took on a little project of my own, which was to revive Queen's Medical Magazine, which got me some really interesting things about getting sponsorship and budget and negotiation. But the but what I did find then um, was, you know, what do you do after medicine? Obviously, at that point, we were only ever just doing a pre-registration one year, equivalent to FY1. There was a tendency to do what you get good marks in as a career. And I think that, you know, I, I, you know, I won all the prizes in paediatrics. And it's very, it's very kind of, um, well, you know, it's very impressive when the professor of paediatrics is ringing you up saying, you must do paediatrics. And I'm thinking, do I really want to do paediatrics? And, you know, because of my physiology background, people say, you should be doing anaesthetics. And it's, I think it's really quite important to make sure that you actually, you know, are thinking. And in the meantime, um, obviously, you're a self-funding student. I worked as an industrial chemist. Um, so, usefully, my first degree helped in this. The fact that I'd done some chemistry was sufficient to get me into this factory. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, I became an incident expert in gold cyanide plating. This is because the kind of bit at the end is, is here is, is actually plated. So when I arrived on day one, they said, oh, you've done some chemistry, haven't you? I said, yes, very, you know, I'm coming to get this job. And they, they said, right, well, actually, this is the gold cyanide bath, and, and if it goes wrong, you have to empty it, and that's the amyl nitrite should get poisoned and take it quickly, and it doesn't always work. I thought, right, okay, uh, well, we know where we are. So, um, during, during medical school, I thought, what shall I do? So, we, uh, eventually, I was fortunate enough to get on a, um, 
general medicine rotation which had six months of paediatrics in it. And I think that was really helpful because actually what it told me was I didn't want to do paediatrics. It was useful, um, but I didn't want to. And I started my research into South Asian health at that time and I moved from doing, I did um, uh, general uh, medicine and MLCP and then moved into chemical pathology which is a dual um, dual qualification, MRCP, MRC, uh, MRC Path as was then, um, uh, uh, career. And I had some really pivotal advice from a mentor called Brendan Buckley, who's now in um, uh, Cork, whose job I actually took over as a consultant, who really said to me, look, you've got all of these skills, you know, you could you know, come into chemical pathology, you can do metabolic medicine, and you can use your MRCP, um, you can really do some really interesting research, you've got the biochemistry background. So all of the things that I'd done in a serendipitous way helped me. And this is where I arrived 25 years ago, and this is why I still work uh, on a clinical basis. Um, and I think for me, I had a really good opportunity in building a laboratory team, multi-professional in nature. Um, it was quite, a, I had a very, very good team. Uh, quite clearly, I lacked one thing of my predecessor, um, and that was being able to, most of my, most of my um, staff um, were highly skilled uh, and um, male BMSs, and one thing that was quite clear to them was I would not be able to drink them under the table uh, such as my predecessor could. However, and, and when the first one had a baby, they said, we're going out to wet the, wet the baby's head, and I said, great. And they went, no, this is only... Um, this is uh, male only, so you can see where we were at that time. So anyway, um, we, we had a fantastic, we had a fantastic team, and uh, uh, my, uh, uh, we st I've still, although I'm not laboratory director now, I'm st I still work with them. I became director of nutrition support and built a highly performing team. Again, I turned up, they said, oh, by the way, Brendan used to head up this team. And since there was no paperwork, I said, oh, okay. Um, and then I discovered about six months later that was not true. Um, actually, um, th that was a sort of um, thing that they had given to me when I arrived, and I became involved in research. And we undertook a, um, major trials on our research team and international collaborations, which we still have. Um, so the opportunity at one, it then became to become clinical tutor, looking after the doctors at training. This came through the post. I threw it in the bin. Because I thought, well, that was all, you had to be like about, and I wasn't 50 odd then. Um, you, had to be, you had to be senior and all that sort of stuff. My clinical director came to me and said, have you seen this? And I said, yeah, I threw it in the bin. And he said, no, no, I think you should get it out of the bin. I think you should apply. So I became clinical um, tutor, and this is um, Health Education West Midlands. And essentially, I then became, was elected lead clinical tutor. Not plain sailing. I mean, I applied for associate dean. I didn't get it. I thought, why didn't I get it? Asked for feedback. Thought about how I might plan a bit better next time. Became associate postgraduate dean for quality, both medical and non-medical, which was unusual at the time. And then one day, the, um, the postgraduate dean uh, got elected to be chair of the RCGP. And there was like a 48-hour window to apply for an interim um, of job share. So, and, and the 24 hour kind of notification um, uh, about the interview. So I kind of wandered down between clinics, said what I thought, and they offered me the job. So again, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sort of planning for that. It just sort of happened. And I didn't have, I think it was a, it's a challenging role and it's highly political, multiple stakeholders. And I really would have benefited from some coaching and mentoring. I didn't even know what the word coach was. Um, so, the deanery, um, uh, we went through quite a lot of um, uh, changes. We had to, and obviously, be on transition, which we've gone through again. You can see here, this is a little deanery visit, as I say, say to my uh, <coughs> colleagues, kneeling to the dean is optional. Um, but we, I think we built, a, you know, we had the opportunity to make real changes and actually deliver really high quality training. And then as part of... Um, um, the development of our health education and they had the opportunity to become director of education quality and postgraduate dean. So that allowed me to become um, 
non-medical as well. And I, I, because of my background in the lab from the nutrition teams, I really was very interested. I didn't see myself as just um, as somebody that trained doctors. It was quite interesting because people said to me, um, do you know what, um, you're a doctor, how do you know about non-medical education? And the answer is because I've been steeped in it all along. Um, and it was, it's a fantastic opportunity to develop multi-professional working, workforce transformation. We've done, we did a lot um, uh, in the West Midlands, some of which we've brought with us. And then, of course, last year we went to Beyond Transition, and where the 13 decks that there were, for one for each let be, became four and became a geography. And again, I mean, I really was undecided about what I should do. Should I stay as a postgraduate dean? Um, I'd lose a non-medical then, or should I apply? And having had some conversations with um, one of my mentors, and again, I think I could have had a lot more um, interaction had I known about it. I really could have um, sort of thought about this a little bit more in depth. Um, I applied for um, and was encouraged to apply for the Director of Education and Quality for London and the South East. Um, and that's where I am now, uh, very close to, uh, around the corner. And I think for me, it's, you know, the journey has been serendipitous. Um, but actually, there are some points along the way where I think I was fortunate um, and I could have sort of uh, had a lot more career counselling. And I'm very envious of what's available in London because it isn't available often in, in many other um, letbys. So it's a fantastic opportunity for people in London to take take control of their careers and actually know what's out there. Part of the, the thing was I didn't know what was out there. Um, it was, um, uh, uh, you know, it, I just fell in, as you can see, I fell into things. Fortunately, I've had a, a great career. I've worked with some fantastic people. I still do. It's a new challenge for me in London. But um, uh, I think, uh, and I do have a coach now, <laughs> so I've learned because they've been very helpful to to me here. It really, really is, is a great opportunity that you have here and um, I, I thoroughly recommend everybody to take advantage of it. So thank you once again for inviting me.